line, the red trajectory, or the green trajectory. Again, this is long gaps. When it comes to long gaps, the spline fill generally is not good because you don't know where this should go in between here. Oh, the computer doesn't know mathematically. However, the pattern fill is generally a good model. And if we click the pattern fill, it's now done, our gaps filled, but you notice that it didn't update our graph. Now we can go back and forth and we can see how it works. Again, it's not perfect. It, there is some movement in the dot. So I'm not totally happy with what we have. You'll see our chest dots moving up a little bit and down a little bit. I'm not totally happy with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo that. And you'll notice that our chest uh, dot gap is now back, okay? So let's try a different one. Let's try the C7. Okay, so we pick source and we change to the C7 dot. Okay, now um, the trajectory looks similar, but let's, let's go ahead and fill and let's see how that looks. Okay, so again, not perfect, but a little better, a little better. Okay, so uh, for now, for now, we don't really have a, a better choice. So let's undo that and just leave it, leave it as a gap for right now, okay? Uh, let's move on to left front of the shoulder gap. Let's click on that and let's pick the source. Let's try the source as the left back of the shoulder, um, which in this case, I have to figure out what's front and back here. Uh, huh. It seems I have something labeled wrong. Let me hit escape and I'm going to click on this again. Left. Front. Oh, I know. Ah, uh, huh. I'm, I'm confused. I'm told you I always like to rotate around in 3D, so even I get confused. Okay, so that's good. It is left front of the shoulder. I was looking upside down. Okay, so that, that's fine. Let's pick source as left back of the shoulder. Color coding can definitely help you in that case. And this time it looks like both are pretty good, so I'm just going to fill. And this one, this one's showing a little bit different, but let's go ahead and try to fill it. And we have one more gap, and this one's pretty small. And let's go ahead and fill that. Okay. Oh, sorry, we had four. And let's fill that. Okay, now let's, let's go back to our first gap here and zoom out and then kind of pan in and out. And let's see how this looks. Okay, so now that one looks really nice, filled well. Okay, now here we're going to have some play in our dot. But it's pretty good yes it, it's it's actually quite good it's quite good it doesn't move around too much yeah it, it's fine it's gonna be fine okay that's good so let's look at our uh, third gap here and again pretty good yeah okay so that's good I, I'm happy with that Let, let's move on um to the right front of the shoulder. Okay, so again, same thing. In this case, let's use the right back shoulder. So we're gonna click pick source, we're gonna pick the dot, and again, we could use spline or pattern. I'm gonna fill this way, and I'm gonna do it again, and again, and again. And I'm not gonna zoom through those uh, so that you don't have to sit here and watch. I'm just gonna assume they're okay. Um, and I'm going to move on to the, I'm going to do the chest. And I was happier with how the chest um, moved with respect to this C7, but I think I might be even happier uh, with respect to the sternum dot. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to pick the sternum as the source. And I'm going to say fill. And now let's see how it fills that. So, and it moves just a little bit, but I think in general it's fairly good. Okay, now what you're gonna notice here is that the, the gap is ending around frame 800, but our trial goes all the way to 1102. Okay, now this is, a, this is 
something that you should learn how to do. Now what you're also going to notice here is that the chest dot, the real chest dot, wasn't missing and it just didn't track it properly. So what, what happened is we had a pop-up dot and our pop-up dots can cause us a lot of problem. Um, so what we want to do is we want to be careful not to label those when, they, when the real dot is present. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to frame advance back and forth. Now what I'm, I, I, I want to use the real dot when I possibly can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to click on the wrong dot here. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say delete section and unlabel forwards because I don't think it's right from that point forward. This on the other hand is the real dot. So I'm going to, and we can see here that, that the chest dot isn't present any longer because it ends here. It would show us a gap with more if there was uh, more dot present. So what I can do is I can now label the real chest dot and I can hit escape to get out of label mode. I can click on the dot and I can see now that the chest dot is present all the way until the end of the trial. Although we have two small gaps here. So let's go ahead and fill those. Um, again, it's not perfect, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and live with it being off. Well, no, I'm going to show you how to, how to fix that. Okay, so let's say that I like it when it's here. It's right in the center about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say delete and unlabel forwards. And you'll notice that that deleted the label on the dot. So I'm going to go forward and you'll notice it's not labeled until where I like where it's labeled again. And I'm going to say right about maybe here is it labeled correctly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and delete and unlabel backwards. And you'll see that the trajectory that was there is now gone. Okay. So what I've done is I've inserted a new gap. But to do that, I first have to relabel this as the chest dot, okay? And again, it's not perfect, but it, it, it's good enough for, for this. Okay, so now we have three gaps, whereas before we just had two. So let's click on the chest gaps. And again, we're using the sternum to predict where the chest dot actually is. And let's try to fill and fill and fill. Okay, so let's go back to this first one, the big one. And big gaps are always a bit of a problem. And let's just see how it filled. Okay, so it's still off by a little bit. Uh, it's not perfect. There's, there's ways that we, can, that we can fix this, but... I think I'm just going to live with it for right now. Because when we define our chest, we have all these other dots around and they're not moving. So I think we'll live with that one jumping around just a bit. Okay, uh, let's move on to the right front of the head. Uh, yeah, right front of the head here. Okay, so right front of the head, I'm going to use left back, of, uh, right, sorry, right back of the head to predict where that dot is. And we can see that our gap is quite small. I'm going to fill that and we only had one. So now I'm going to look on the head for any more. We do have a left front of the head gap and again, we notice that the dot is actually here, so I just forgot to label that one. We can always go, we can pick left front of the head and we can tell it, oh, there's the left front of the head. We can hit escape to get out of label mode and pick our uh, left front of the head gap again. And indeed it did find the gap. And in this case, I'm going to pick the left back of the head as our source, okay? Now, uh, let's go ahead and say fill and we can go to our next one and our next one and our next one. And again, the dot is actually present again. So let's go ahead when we have a dot and use it to our advantage. And let's, no, you know what, this time let's just ignore this. This is a small gap. So let's go ahead and just fill the gap. So sometimes you can do that, even when the dot's present, when it looks good. You see the trajectory, the dot's right in the center. So you can see, oh, it, it's doing a pretty good job of predicting where the dot should have been. If we hit fill, now you'll see that it, it kind of superimposed the, the, the virtual dot on top of where the real dot was. So it indeed did pick 